everybody. Randy Patterson here with Boomerosity. If you're an old fart like me, you may or may not remember, uh, depending on how old you were and what you were partaking at the time. I was too young to partake and never have partook, but that's a whole nother story. But you may remember a band called the Flying Burrito Brothers. And if you followed Boomerosity for very long at all, especially for the last, I don't know, four years or so, you may remember an interview I did. It was written, it was not recorded like this, with a gentleman by the name of Chris James. Chris is a member of the current configuration of what is now referred to as the Burrito Brothers. But the Flying Burrito Brothers is what started this whole thing going back in the late 60s. And it was started as an offshoot or spinoff from the birds. And so I had people like uh, Chris Hillman at the helm, which... I interviewed Chris a couple years ago, and you can find that interview on, on boomerosity.com. But the the figurehead of those first couple of albums and that first incarnation of that group was a gentleman by the name of Graham Parsons, who was good friends with the Rolling Stones, especially with, with Keith Richards. And the short life of Graham is the stuff of legend and folklore, and there's just a lot of stuff you can read about it. But... The band, the Flying Burrito Brothers, and now the Burrito Brothers, has always flown kind of under the radar of huge fame, but they're still legendary. And it's the stuff that great music emanates from and is created as a result of all that. And so in this second interview with Chris, you're going to hear a lot of great stories that go back a ways. Some of the -the behind-the-scenes chatter about the band and a lot of great info about this new record called Together. And if you love, you know, Southern rock or Americana rock, uh, Americana, I mean, uh, folk rock, any of that, those genres, and you haven't ever heard of the Burrito Brothers, get this album, listen to it. You're going to fall in love with it. And I think you're really going to love this interview with Chris. So without any further ado, here is the second interview I've had the privilege to conduct with Chris James of the Burrito Brothers. And if you don't mind, would you mind sharing it with your friends? Would you hit like too, as well as subscribe? It helps us out a lot and it doesn't cost you a dime. So without any further ado, here's that interview and we will catch you next time. Until next time, this is Randy Patterson with Boomerosity. Take care. So, how you been, my friend? Very good. How about you? It's uh, it's a, it's always an adventure. So, uh... well, yeah, that <laughs> describes life. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially at our ages, right? So, yes, it, yes. You're you're in Nashville, the Nashville area, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm up in the Smoky Mountains, the east of you there. So. Oh, okay. All but, right. Um, Let's see, last time you and I talked, it was uh, around April or May of 2020. I think we were in the middle of the lockdown there, and you yeah, guys, yeah. guys had just put out an album. I think it was uh, the, the Notorious Burrito That's Brothers. That's right. The Notorious Burrito Brothers it was uh, released right when the pandemic hit in 2020. Yeah. How did it do for you guys? Well... I don't know. It, it 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 didn't break through as like we hoped, I guess, but because uh things were so stopped by the pandemic, but it was it was actually really nice for me because it was the first time that I had been uh lined up for as much of this kind of thing. So SFM uh got a whole series of interviews to promote the album and uh being isolated at home didn't prevent that from happening. So right. it was something nice to get to do while so many people were just kind of stalled. Mm-hmm. Do you find that by doing that with that, that perhaps you guys came out with some more fans than you did before all the shutdown happened? I think so. Yeah. I think uh, even though we're not, uh, you know, we seem to be forever under most general big public's uh, radar. Uh, we have fans who really love us and stay in touch and things. And and uh, I think that broadened to a degree. And I also think a really nice thing happened in that um, we had less and less and less of that um, curmudgeonly negative response where 
uh, whenever a group has lasted this long and had this many personnel changes, there's a faction who like to insist that you're not really the real group. <laughs> and uh, it, I always uh, aim people at, our, at the timeline on the website that shows how every step of the way transpired and it never was suddenly a bunch of posers claiming to be the Breeder Brothers. It, it was always the, the core group of any given point in time. Uh, if they sort of called it quits, there was always some offer from a record label or promoter saying, no, 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 don't call it quits. We want there to be a Burrito Brothers. <laughs> and uh, they would get the most interested viable people from the previous lineup to add one or two new guys and keep going. And that's always how it's been. It just does it over and over and over, which is not a bad thing because each time it's reconstituted, there's a new drive. There's a new sense of wanting to prove and show what we've got. And a freshness too, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. Well, I find as a fan, you know, maybe look a little different on on this side of the microphone, but you know, I have people that we I've got good friends, DJs, people like that, and we kind of go back and forth on is such and such group still really that group? I mean, right. Yeah. Whether you go from the Rolling Stones, you know, now they have technically just two original members, but right. you know. Ronnie's been with them for almost 50 years. Yeah. You know, he, he started hitting them in the mid seventies. Right. And, um, you know, you, then you, you know, you, of course you go to people like foreigner or journey or people like that. And they have one, or in the case of foreigner, you know, they're still the only real original member is, is Mick Jones when he's able to perform with them. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. But to me, I, I think it's where our biases lie. Yeah, and yeah. We, if we like a group, we'll take it no matter what. And if we only kind of like a group, then we get a little sour about, you know, how many of the original members there are. I mean, America's got that problem. They're down to one. Three dog nights down to one dog night. You know, yeah, it's just yeah. a matter of opinion, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I agree. I, I think uh, uh, where the biases lie makes a lot of sense. Um I also think it probably is not a, a an exact thing for all long-standing groups. You know, there's some. Oh, let's see. I can't think of who comes to mind. Oh, I know one that comes to mind. Procol Harum. Yeah. They really needed Gary Brooker. Always. He from day one. That was the key member of the group, and since he, as long as he was in it personnel changes weren't that big a deal uh but um if a group uh, really uh um was a big hit making entity for one decade or something long ago and now there's a version of that group that doesn't have those guys in it but they go out and play that repertoire i could see objecting on the grounds that it's not quite really the group but in in our case it's a whole other thing it's like ever since day one this was an ever evolving group there were no two albums with the same personnel even album number one to album number two had a couple different guys in it and the guy widely regarded as the key figure in the burrito brothers history graham parsons was only on the first two albums yeah yeah. And they went on and on and on and didn't have a whole body of super famous, big top 10 hits. They just had a, a legacy of being a really fine group that made good music, good albums. So carrying that legacy as already, uh, you know, the precedent already set that that it changes personnel is a whole different thing from, uh, you know, some some group with a huge uh, body of famous songs that isn't those guys anymore. I should know the answer to this question. And furthermore, I should have looked it up, even if I, since I don't know the answer to this question, but maybe you do is, and I didn't write it down. This just popped in my head. Um, is to your knowledge, is there a book out that, that, chronicles the history of the burrito brothers from day one till today i know there's a lot of 
different biographies and autobiographies out there that kind of touch on it, touch on it, you yeah. know, whether it's Graham or, you know, Chris Hillman's book and, you know, right. all that kind of stuff. But to your knowledge, is there a, a, a definitive book on the history of the Flying Burrito Brothers and all its vari varying uh, configurations? No, there isn't. I, there should, I should write it. I, there I you go. There you go. <laughs> the closest thing to that, and I always like to invite people in uh, when I do these interviews, invite people to look at our website. We have a timeline, and it starts in 1968, and it has an entry for each year, and it it's not tedious. It, it's there. It's kind of brief. Briefly summarizes who was in the group and what happened and what albums came out. Mm -hmm. And it goes year by year, and you can see the whole progression. And the the and there's also the Wikipedia entry where you can uh, get right. that sense where it starts with the Flying Burrito Brothers and goes all through the years through the slightly different name changes, dropping the word flying uh, for about seven or eight years. It was going by Burrito Deluxe, all of that that history you can find that way, but there's not a biography of it. The the um, what was it called? Uh, Hot Burritos, I think. Um, I've got a copy of it somewhere. Uh, was um, is that it up there? No, nah, I don't need to go hunting for it, I guess. But uh, uh, I think it was, I think that's the one that John Einerson wrote with Chris Hillman. And it kind of covers that uh, initial era of like 69 to 73 or 4. And uh, um, Hillman, kind of, if anybody knows much about it, it, it should be aware that he, he's pretty much of the mind that um, the Burrito Brothers only made four albums. He yeah. uh, uh, left after the fourth album, and so I guess if I'm not in it, it can't be. Any, but I don't know. But but uh, um, they called the fourth album the last of the Red Hot Burritos, which was kind of a a thing those days there was a buffalo springfield album called last time around um oh what are the last exit by traffic they there were these uh we're done now and the name of the album was supposed to say that and uh, uh and then lo and behold rick roberts leads a group of flying burrito brothers the very next year that made uh a whole bunch of concert dates and an album and and it just went on from there and in fact when graham parsons was asked about it he he said he's fine with it that the, the group going on even without any of the original members because he loved the idea of it just going on the quote was something along the lines of it's got to go on whether i'm in it or anybody else it's got to keep going mm -hmm. and it has so the the hillman biography covers three or four years of it, but uh, but as our timeline shows, there have been Burrito Brothers ever since. There never weren't. They, it's not like there was some big period of time where the band didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Well, to your knowledge, does there, is there, um, and we'll get to, I want to talk about the new album because it's phenomenal, but the going back to the beginning i mean all that whole the 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 start of the band back in those days when Graham was alive and stuff are there any people associated with that era not necessarily who were in the band but people that would connect with the band Ty, you know you know i know emmy lou's name drops in every once in a while on it yeah. and that kind of thing are there people still out there who just like are cheering you guys on from that initial group of supporters who, you know, say, Hey, you guys are, you got it. You're nailing it. And you know, we love what you're doing. Um, it, I would have to unfortunately say pretty much no. Although the closest we come to the, really the problem is that they're not alive anymore. The, really? uh, the only living person from the first burrito brothers album is chris hillman right and he has no interest in leading a group of flying burrito brothers he he likes to he he contacted us when we were acquiring trademark rights as our label 
wanted us to do. Um, and he asked that we not use the flying word and just go by Burrito Brothers. And we thought, well, that's fine. I kind of like it that way anyway. They, they dropped flying when they moved to Nashville in the early 80s anyway. And I've got this little thing in the back of my head that I remember reading Roger McGuinn talking about wanting, loving that the birds started with a B because the Beatles and the Beach Boys were the biggest thing out. And, and these bees uh, put them in the same, you know, near cataloging or, or just the same lucky realm, so to speak. And you can add to that another significant pioneer band, the band. Yep. And so I sort of actually prefer being the Burrito Brothers. It's kind of tidier and, and uh, neater than the long, crazy flying Burrito Brothers name. And Hillman said that he would like to own the full name for use as um, like logo, like um, putting out archival things or T-shirts or, or stuff that that remembers the glory days when he was in it. But the trademark office was specific enough that they granted us trademark rights to the Burrito Brothers because we're the existing band. And, and he would have had to claim and show that he wanted to do that and was doing that to obtain rights to the band. And so they're two different trademarks and, and uh, we're happy to honor his request and not use the word flying in our group name. Yeah. But it hasn't been there for a long time anyway. And really, if you go back to the earliest um, like reviews and things, any articles on the Flying Burrito Brothers from way back when, you'll find somewhere in there they're referred to simply as the Burrito Brothers or even as just the burritos. It's always been kind of a name that it's morphous. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I just, I, I do find it unfortunate that there are so many acts out there who this kind of, for lack of a better word, conflict comes into play. I mean, we're hearing and reading a lot now about the guess who, you know, and there's, you know, and then when people leave, I mean, when Chuck Negron left Three Dog Night, it was, you know, he had to say Chuck Negron of Three Dog Night. Of course, yeah. this Creedence Clearwater Revival versus Revisited. And yeah, yeah. there's always workarounds, but fans just want to hear great music. And if the as many of the originals are together, you know, great. But we we just want everybody to you know, to quote yeah. Rodney King, I just want everybody to get along. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I just realized I got sidetracked a little and didn't completely answer your previous question. We do have two guys who've been really, really good to us who go way far back in the history. Rick Roberts has always been very, very cordial. We communicate quite nicely on Facebook, uh, um, uh, correspond. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't had the, the I guess, nerve uh, to to request that he give us some sort of glowing endorsement. That's sort of an awkward thing to ask for. But obviously, in, in his own small way, he, he kind of does by not objecting to us and being so open and cordial. And then uh, possibly even more, Al Perkins. We've, I've played a lot of music with Al. We're friends. And uh, uh, he supported, he, he joined us on stage when I was doing my little side trip called the Graham Band, and um, uh, Al has no problem with us at all either. I, I don't think Hillman does, because he was cordial, uh, and we were very respectful when we had our exchange about not using the word flying, mm -hmm. but I, I, there again, that would be even more awkward for me to, to try to engage Hillman into... Um, endorsing us so to speak I, i've had people say well what do you got to lose you know maybe you ought to approach him but uh i don't know i'm shy about it maybe <laughs> well you know and i i i think the more that time passes we just realize there's really not much downside anymore yeah, yeah. i mean when we're young I, I look at it like class reunions i've worked on four class reunions for my high school and I realized that earlier, you know, when we're younger and it's that 10-year reunion, that's where people feel like they got a, 
show up in the loop right. and present themselves as more successful than they really are. Right. Now, yeah. Just how successful they really are. And then by the time you get to a 40 and 50 year class reunion, heck, we're just glad everybody's still alive. You know? <laughs> So, you know, I, and I I hope and pray that that's what happens with all these different groups, that whether it's just very minimally standoffish, like you're describing maybe with Chris, or, you know, there there's the whole bad blood thing like you hear with Crosby Sills. And, and I don't Nash. think we have any bad blood. Yeah, well, good. That's good. That's yeah. very good. So, yeah. you know, it's just a matter of taking care of business. And speaking of taking care of business, this new album, wow, you guys really put together a phenomenal album. We got two versions of it, of course, the yeah. the, the premium or extended one, and then the then the the basic one. And so, tell fans about together. Okay, well, I, you almost said what I was getting ready to say, uh, uh, sort of in our defense, so to speak, that. Uh, the band is just really, really quite capable and very tuned in to the legacy and the history. I believe we're doing a very fine job of uh, holding up our end of the deal here, being the uh, Burrito Brothers. And uh, it, it's got nods. You, if you know, if you're a fan of the group for way back and even on back into the birds, which were the parent club, so to speak, that... Mm -hmm. uh, Burrito Brothers started as a spinoff from the birds. Um, the feeling in our hearts of uh, the whole motivation and love for doing it is to to carry on that idea that 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 kind of music is what turned us on in the first place, and it shouldn't be just forgotten. It should it should remain out there, and it seems to me um, that we're succeeding at making music that doesn't sound like some complete throwback, that it's not like trying to copy the earliest sound in some mimicry sort of way, but you can tell the connections, sometimes lyrical, sometimes musical signature things, and the connections are there, but there's also something about it that's very much a current group of today. It, it just doesn't sound like some old hat because it's because our the, the level of recording technology and clarity and all that is is being utilized to the, its fullest. Peter Young is probably the most responsible, the biggest reason for that in our case, because he's, uh, well, he's the drummer in the band and the harmony singer and one of the writers. And uh, he's also studio engineer. And we do our uh, overdubs with him at his studio on, down on Music Row, mm -hmm. Ultra Audio. And it's just uh, up to date, state of the art uh, technology sound. It's it's just so right in my mind. And, and uh, so it's a, it's a special thing. I think that, uh, that we're doing as good a job at carrying this ball as anybody could. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced of it. And, and uh, the Together album has a bittersweet thing to it that we lost our buddy Bob Hatter, the guitar player of the band, during the making of the album. Uh, he he got a return horrible visit from cancer he had previously been a survivor hmm. and this time he didn't survive and it was right around it was in that pandemic as you mentioned we were promoting our previous album and uh so generally once an album is out and after a little bit of time of promoting um we're already thinking about what we want to do next we love making these up we love recording and so we were getting together and uh, um, demoing and writing songs and uh, or, or I should say we were attempting to, although it was very hard to get together with Bob because that pandemic didn't it last almost two years? I mean, for for people really concerned, I mean, there's uh, there's some who consider it still around, no. uh, but uh, Bob with, with a cancer battle and, and a, a reduced um, immunity system wasn't going to go out into the public. He was he was laying low at home for probably the better part of two years. 
And boy, did that ever invade us trying to get together with Bob and get this album completed. But we, uh, Tony Paoletto, the pedal steel player of the band, mm -hmm. um, he suggested we contact our friend Steve Allen to complete the album since we had it fully realized. We had all the demos. We knew what songs we wanted on it. We, for that matter, we even knew what order we wanted them in. We had the album thought out. And uh, and Steve said he would do it if he got Bob's blessing. If Bob didn't mind, if Bob said, sure, uh, he'd like to see the album finished since he saw it begun. And uh, that's how we finally finished it. Uh, and and so for one last time, we listed Bob as a band member in the credits, uh, even though Steve played more of the guitar on this album, uh, but Bob was there at the the whole initial initializing of it. Um, you know, he's a co-writer of a bunch of the songs. He sings one of them, uh, I Find Love, and uh, and played on all the demos, but uh, wasn't really available when it came time to go into the big studio and make the master quality recordings. And so Steve finished that up for us. Mm -hmm. And luckily, lucky for us, as, as talented and capable as Steve is, he agreed that when we have something, next thing we do, call him, he's in. He wants to be on board. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. we, we lost Bob a little over a year ago, a uh, year and a half ago. And that, and therefore we dedicated this album to him. Cool. Very cool. Now it's your, this band's config, this particular configuration, what is it? The fourth or fifth album you guys did together? I think it's the fourth. Yeah. That's what I'm doing, trying to piece it all together. And yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. I first came in in 2009, and that was a different configuration. That was uh, with my brother, Fred, who had obtained the, the record deal. He's kind of the main reason that we're still going, uh, because that was one of those turning points. The Burrito Deluxe guys, who were headed up by Carlton Moody, decided to throw in the towel. They were calling it quits, and uh, Walter Egan was in that group at the time and so was Rick Lano and so when my brother was asked by a, one of his label contacts in England if there was a, a burrito brothers going or or if not how hard would it be to to stir one back up uh, uh, and and we were on board with that and uh, um, so Rick Lano and Walter Egan from the previous years lineup became the carryovers and my brother Fred and I were the new guys so to speak and uh, we made the one album called Sound as Ever uh, but Fred being producer was a mixed blessing because he got us this deal but then he was real uh, he was adamant about thinking that we needed another deal before we made our next album. And, and I said, well, those are always forthcoming. I'm not sure about the old horse before the cart idea. I, I think we should record and pitch, uh, pitch the results, uh, uh, not just wait for somebody to offer us a deal and then use that budget to record. And, uh, and we butted heads on that and it's so much. So it ended up uh, a split. He, he, but I kind of think he was never meant to last in the group that long. He was always his own solo artist and producer and played a slightly different style of predominantly blues. Um, so, uh, so we went on uh, uh, without him and that's when Bob Hatter came in and it had been this dragging of feet for gosh, seven years I think that we didn't make an album and I hated that and, and then we finally made Still Going Strong in 2018 and that's the first one with Bob Hatter so essentially that's this nucleus it, with yeah. a little bit of change uh, from uh, one album to the next uh, we got a different bass player 
each album. <laughs> and then on, uh, let's see, the next album was Notorious Burrito Brothers. Mm -hmm. And and that's when we decided, when we make the albums, let's not even bother finding a bass player because Bob Hatter can play it. And then we found just as beautifully Steve Allen could. And it was nice to have this four piece chemistry with the old thought of uh, too many chefs can ruin the, you know, the old uh, cliche time. Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we just all were, the four of us are nicely on the same page and, and very uh, uh, economical. We work well together and don't need to figure out uh, how or why to include another person in the recording process. Of course, to play our live shows, we, we get it. We essentially hire a bass player so that the guitar player isn't stuck with the job of playing both guitar and bass like he did on the album. Yeah. Well, I, while you were talking, I just had this, I don't know, it may be a good idea, maybe really corny, but I just thought of something that could put you guys and Hillman together. And that's just a project, whether it's a tour or recorded music or whatever, birds and burritos. And just let, you know, you guys can kind of segue back and forth from all the way, you know, from the birds to flying burritos to the current configuration, Chris's current work, and it could all just blend in together. So <laughs> oh, that'd be that would, that would be cool. His, boy, he's done some really, really nice. He's on some sort of late in life resurgence because mm -hmm. that uh, did his book and the records and the yeah, whole... and the one that Tom Petty produced, which wasn't very long ago. That that that's really fine album wow. and a new a new release of that uh, sweetheart of the rodeo 50th anniversary concert mm -hmm. show uh yeah he's done a lot of good work i i remember being really crazy for uh, the souther hillman fure band yeah well richard oh. Fure, yeah. yeah good guy very good guy yeah in your opinion back to to together why was you know, you've worked on a lot of albums and and seen a lot of changes over the years in your opinion how is or was this one this one album together different from anything else you've ever worked on from the previous burrito brothers album on back what what well, significant differences do you see about this one it's probably the um the highest level of uh, of the uh, the whole apparatus, the team burrito being in place. We've got solid concept for cover art now, um, which is handled by Warren Ells. We've got a, a record label who's kept us on board for three albums. Um, we've got this, like I just said, if it ain't broke, don't fix. We, we don't have the, the infighting at all. Haven't had that in a while. Uh, we have this just, uh, really sense of confidence and, and, uh, joy when we get together in the studio and just pretty much just knock it out. I, I remember talking about how some people, um, talk about maybe lowering the lights or a little inset or something for a mood and hoping to get that spirit for it's time to do a vocal and you really want to get in some cool place. And it's, it's weird that I think that cool place is just in your heart when you reach a certain point in your life. And I think that's where we are. I don't think anything like that hardly changes it at all. You you go in with this confidence level and experience level of knowing exactly what you wish to execute. And that in itself is plenty of high. That's mm -hmm. that's the best, the uh, nirvana, the enjoyment of all. And, and we had more of that this time around than I think we have before. And I, I actually am thrilled that uh, I don't see any reason for that not to remain the case next time out. I'm very, very grateful for what I have. I, I realize we're not um, hugely famous, you know, monumental superstars, but you could do a lot worse than have this outlet for creative music uh, given to you as a musician. It, it's a really a sweet thing. And I appreciate every minute of it. And one more thing that made this album obviously different from the other is a band member dying 
during the course of it is intense. There's just, this is, you know, I, I certainly won't forget making this one. I think also we, um, another thing really kind of weird is we, we paused on it. We, we were taking so long at finally getting it all completed, uh, even though it was all recorded well over a year ago, all the ducks in a row and uh, uh, losing Bob and all that stuff. Um, we got, I got a big idea last year to make a Christmas album mm -hmm. and just got started on it, regardless of where we were at on together. And they sort of overlapped a little. And by August of last year, we had completed the Burrito Brothers Christmas album. Mm -hmm. And I essentially begged our label, Brian Adams and Robin Sellers at SFM in England to just, let's just wait on together and and promote it as our newest album once 2024 comes around because uh, we're just high on having made this christmas album mm -hmm. and uh, to sit on it for a full year just didn't feel good it, it felt like a chance to raise a few eyebrows and and uh, have people uh, notice us where perhaps they hadn't before you know a christmas album is a different sort of thing yeah. And so they're almost concurrent, and we chose to treat this album as our new album once we finished up with the Christmas season. And in, in, doing, in doing that, to underscore the idea of it being new, I created this, um, the, the deluxe version. Right. And, and it's, a, it's not a double album. It's a, it's a two-disc set in which the second disc is just curiosities it's just demos and live things things that relate to the the um, so it's it's a it's the together album with a little bonus uh, on the side and it's available only from our website it's not uh, nice. uh, distributed worldwide like right. to get together is the album the, the together deluxe thing is is for for people who want a, a little peek behind the scenes i think that's a cool smart idea to do that yeah uh, were there any surprises in putting the album together hmm you know perhaps yeah probably uh, to a degree i mean i hope this doesn't sound insulting to peter young but uh he sang uh streets of santa rosa and to a degree i was surprised he does a splendid job that's a very good vocal and i hadn't been very familiar with Pete as a lead singer. I just, I don't think he's done all that much of it. Maybe with some of his guys he grew up with or, or something, but uh, he's not generally known for doing that around Nashville. And I've known him a long time. I, I, I knew that he might jump in if you're playing some loose bar gig or something, you know, and, and that always, a lot of people will do that. And, and there's a lot of people who have fun doing that, who aren't, how do I put it, put tuned into that place you go as a true lead vocalist where you, right. you just uh, get all the way into a song and, and, and get it, your heart open to it. He did that on streets of Santa Rosa. And I think it was, uh, largely had a lot to do with hello oh okay <laughs> uh, had a lot to do with um, uh, um, the loss of Bob it was the last song it was a song written by Bob Hatter and Peter Young and Peter was uh, uh, digging deep to remember he looked through some notes and knew remembered enough about the song they started to uh, to complete it, uh, and I certainly encouraged him doing that. And then he uh, took the lead vocal on it. And uh, I'd say the fact that it came out as one of the strongest songs on the album uh, might have been a little bit of a surprise. Mm -hmm. Cool. Which one of the songs, I've got three that I would point to as a calling card. It, which song or songs would you tell burrito fans hey if you like this song you're really going to dig the rest of the album 
Well, I think the first song is that, uh, and that's why it's first. I mean, the old uh, idea of album making is hoping to suck the listener in with the first uh, impression. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's really catchy, solid, hooky song, and uh, uh, not very not too long and just to the point. A uh, nice nice one that Ms. Misery. Yeah. Then. Probably my favorite song on the album would be I Live for Loving You mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I regard that as the closest I've ever come to a, a timeless standard. I, I, I would it would be a dream come true to have that song get picked up and, and recorded by other good singers or put in a movie or so. I think it has that quality to it. Um I guess that's for others to determine, but in my world, it seems the closest I've ever come to something like that. And it would really be marvelous if, if that got picked up on by a wider audience. It, it just strikes me as a, a solid, pretty, if not, you know, beautiful melody with, with sweet love, loving words. Uh, that's, it's not, uh, limited to any genre or anything like that. it's just fine music i agree i agree well i had that one down and i had two others let go and history suite a lot oh, of those well. songs man those were and the video for i live for loving you wow that was that's you know that's that's where i first heard the song before i got the download for the album and uh you know, those are my three. Those are the three I would point. Yeah. I wouldn't say my favorites. It'd be what I would call definitive of the whole album. Yeah, they're all kind of tied for favorites there, I suppose. But well, the whole album is great. I, I love what you guys did with the whole thing. Yeah, we got the uh, Mr. Customs Man, which is Graham Parsons' lyrics that Bob Hatter and I put music to, and uh, um, let go. It, is is strong it's got that sort of i uh, mentioned before one of the b groups the band it kind of has that funky mm -hmm. leave on and the band kind of sound and that's probably predominantly thanks to uh ronnie gilbo who is an alumni he was in the burrito brothers years ago or, or actually when he was in i think it was the flying burrito brothers and uh his dad was in give gilbo uh, ronnie's quite a uh talent a great guitar player and he a songwriter and singer and uh he had that idea one day when he and i were writing together and uh we we went with it i liked that a lot and then i'm glad you mentioned the history suite because i think that's musical art i think that i'm very proud of that it's like that's kind of uh, uh progressive rock or something in that it's uh, about 15 or 16 minutes of a suite that never lets up it's not like some group just jamming for 15 minutes it's more like six songs put together yeah. seamlessly <laughs> you know the the ultimate example of that is side two of abbey road by the beatles and that's kind of a model uh worth emulating uh, they're not a single one of the songs is like any of those bits but the concept of a suite that holds together uh, you know that's kind of easier said than done we we took some pride in executing that and i think we did a good job of it what kind of feedback are you getting on the album so far all good uh i would love a whole lot more but i can't complain uh, uh it's like nobody's nobody's finding it uh bad by any stretch in fact it sure seems like people are are saying they think it's outstanding mm -hmm. um, it's a little frustrating that we know we did such a good job we know we're the right people for this job and carrying it on well and yet it's hard to get a lot of recognition you know it's a, although like i said before i'm i'm not really sitting around all frustrated because it's not such a bad thing to get to be in this band that's for sure that's true well you know it's hard for any band anymore unless they're part of that corporate conglomerate yeah know, fake music machine that seems to be dominating things and you know catalogs being bought out and all that kind of stuff but do you, i want to kind of shift you kind of reel back a little bit further as far as looking at the 
the entire Burrito Brothers catalog, but with you in it now in the driver's seat and, you know, obviously probably when you guys perform live, you do some of the older cuts, I oh, would yeah. imagine. Oh, yeah. And so do you, from your position, do you have a favorite story about any particular Burrito Brothers song that you guys perform? People maybe coming up to you and telling you, hey, man, you know, and then they share their story with, or you have a personal story tied to a song in the catalog. I guess a couple things come to mind. Uh, there's a, a pretty good story about uh, probably, arguably, the most famous song the Flying Burrito Brothers ever did, and that's Jagger and Richard's Wild Horses. Mm -hmm. And uh, the story went that uh, the Stones wanted sneaky pete to play some steel on their track and when they sent it to graham uh, as the go-between you know because keith knew graham well uh graham fell in love with the song and asked if he could do it and they replied uh that it was okay as long as it wasn't released as a single i'm not sure why but that was their terms and so it went on the second Burrito Brothers album, the Burrito Deluxe by the Flying Burrito Brothers. And uh, Graham does just a marvelous job singing it. And it came out, gosh, the better part of a year, something like seven or eight months at least before Sticky Fingers and the Stones version. So uh, that's kind of a pretty neat little story. And then the other one that popped into mind is also Stones related. When I got in the group in 2009, and probably just right, at, or right then, or maybe a little later, I, I had an idea for a song. I wanted to write Beggar's Banquet because that's a pivotal Rolling Stones album. It's really the album that Graham you could make a case for Graham having influenced that strongly because that's when he and Keith were hanging out. And the previous Rolling Stones album was Satanic Majesties, which is all psychedelic. Wow. Mm -hmm. Suddenly he's met Graham and the next Stones album is this low, lower keyed, earthy, almost Americana ish beggars banquet. And uh, it's a cool title. It, it, it generates thoughts and images. And, and I'm thinking, but there isn't a song by that name. There's no Rolling Stone song called right. Beggar's Banquet. Right. And, and I thought, even take it a step further, that's us. We're at this Beggar's Banquet. You know, we're, we're, we're requesting uh, some notoriety, some, some uh, confirmation, some okay from the public. You know, here we are at the Beggar's Banquet. You know, the Burrito Brothers still going. So I guess those would be two little bits of a story to tell both stones related. Yeah. Very cool. What's on your radar for the rest of 2024. Do you guys have a tour planned? Uh, what, what, what you got? We are hoping to go to Europe where we don't really have a tour plan. I've, I've always said, and I guess I need to try to, I'm not sure exactly how best to pursue if we could be the opening act for a highly established band, boy, that'd be sweet, you know, but uh, the idea of us just going out isn't an easy sell to the other guys. It's like, we're not a huge enough superstar name to uh, command high dollar and, and we're too old to care and too uh, uh, established in Nashville to care to climb in a van, so to speak, and go play night after night all across the country. That's just not us. We're we're established session players here in Nashville. Got a lot of other contacts, so we look for the more individual or short term nice situations. And the the one that appeals to us that I'm hoping to see through at some point in this year is a trip to Europe for like a couple of weeks. Uh, the European audiences have always been very receptive to every version of the burrito brothers uh, yeah. and then we get these occasional that we usually play a couple times at something in nashville each year and you know maybe a spot on a festival or something it's it's a, it's just sort of one shot deals maybe in yeah. short things and we of course are already talking about our next album 
Well, that was my next question. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. and I, I, it's going to be called Time Machine because huh? that's what the legacy of the burritos is. It's a time machine, a musical time machine. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope to include uh, more references to uh, the whole history and um, cameo appearances by alumni members. Oh, that would be uh, so group. cool. Yeah. yeah yeah so and and we've got the 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 like i said we're kind of in the swing now of our our, our whole teamwork the art department so to speak um we we get this you know this uh, shack that's uh on all the albums for the past seven or eight years yeah uh, yeah yeah and uh <laughs> um it's turned it's morphed into different versions of it and the concept, like here on this one, it's the, uh, it's the, you know, uh, it's been turned into a landing craft. Yep. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, it's going to be like, you know, the Doctor Who, the telephone booth. Yeah. Uh, it's that, the, the thing is going to be the time machine on the album cover. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> That, that, that's i'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out on the on the future releases well chris this was a lot of fun always sure is with you. and uh i i'm way overdue for a visit to nashville so when i make it over there maybe we can get together for dinner or coffee or something oh, and, that'd be uh, great. Yes. or if you guys are playing somewhere maybe i can drop in and catch you guys there but um my door is always open to you and all right you know, you know how to reach me either directly or through john and um Let's make these things continue to happen because I love it, man. It's, you guys, are thank you so phenomenal. much. That, that's such a compliment. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Uh, it's been really good talking with you. Likewise. So until next time, man. But let's stay in touch in between. We're connected on Facebook. We All have right, Randy, yeah. so let's keep it going. Yes, Randy. All right. Thank All right. you. Take care, my friend. Stay safe. You, you too. Bye bye.